Good afternoon, folks. Um, Venture Tech Moto here. So, in this video today, I'm going to go through the software that I use to plan or edit a GPX route. There's a ton of different options for this. Ride with GPS is just one that I've used ever since I was cycling and doing bike packing routes, and this is just one that I've used and continued to use just because it's it's fairly simple um, and it works. So. Every, every now and then there's a few nuances, um, but I think that goes with any any route planning. Um, so yeah, this is just one option. Uh, there's many, 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 many others. So first off, we're gonna go to ridewithgps.com. You can get a free account, it's pretty basic. You have the free starter plan, which is you can record your ride, you can create your own routes, create goals, collections, and upload and sync GPS devices. Um, mainly, though, we want to be able to create our own routes. Um, now, there's a premium version. I have this basic version right now. It does what I need it to do. Down here, it's going to show you the differences. Start off with, how do I create a, a route from scratch? So I have a local, uh, local route that I want to make. You have up top called the route planner. I'm going to start a new route because I was actually messing with another one. And so I'm going to go, so we're going to do one in Tennessee and it's pretty simple. So I'm going to start, let's just start because I know this area pretty well. So we're going to start in Reliance. Your first click is going to put your start. You can then drag this around wherever you want. From there, all your other clicks are going to then mark control points along the routes. You can, this is gonna to default to Ride With GPS cycling maps. You can do the Google map. So if you're looking for restaurants, places to stay, different uh, points of interest, those will be on the map. You can also do route planning on your phone. The biggest difference on your phone is you cannot load the Google map. Um, or at least I have not been able to. So that's why if I'm gonna do a route from scratch, I'm gonna go on my desktop and do it on my desktop. So we're gonna go ahead and click through. We're gonna run, I know these are some local gravel roads. We're gonna run through this. It is also on the right side, it's gonna default to cycling. Um, if you are going from one spot to the next and it diverts around certain roads, if you change this to driving, uh, that should fix that. Just make sure you change it back to cycling. Typically on cycling, it's gonna route you through off-road uh, places a lot better than the driving option will. So again, we're just clicking along the routes. We wanna just, we're gonna go all the way over here. And as you can see, the solid line is road surfaces. The um, dotted line here is dirt so one cool thing is going to show you paved versus unpaved it's fairly accurate um, for the most part so as of right now we have a 43 percent paved route based on what we've selected so far so again we're going to do this we're just going to do a quick loop so i just clicked on that you can see it routed me around because i'm on cycling if i was to pick driving it would then and another option you can do is you can click undo it will undo that last change. So now if I click on this, it's gonna run me on the main road, which is fine. So you can toggle between those. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna jump on some more gravel up here, clicking, clicking, control points. I'm gonna go ahead and finish it up. So I'm gonna end my route right back where we were. Another cool feature, mileage. So when you're planning a route, I want to know where, where my mileage markers are because typically for a ride, we'd like to do about 150 to 200 miles a day. So it makes it real easy for me to then plan my stops knowing where the mileage markers are. Love it. From here, so now we have our um, route planned. It's uh, a circle, which is great. If I want to then edit this or go off route for whatever that may be, I can then start editing this by pulling these control points around. Um, 
Oh, and here's one thing you can see here while we were navigating because we were on cycling, it left, it took us off the main road for whatever reason, take it, drag it, put it right back on the main road. Okay. Those are little, little nuances. So when I do create a GPX file, I will run through this entire file and I'll check all my roads to make sure it didn't do anything kind of weird. Um, so if I want to, let's just say, okay, I did my route. Oh, wait, no, I want to run this on trail 81, not up here. You're going to take the next control point after that section. We're going to run it over. We're going to take every control point in order and run it over. And now we're good. So now we've now rerouted from going on this gravel road to trail 81 and we're good. So always remember, if you want to reroute based on control points, you want to grab the control point um, closest um, after that, that road. So for example, again, if I want to run, if I don't want to do this gravel section right here, I want to run it up around here. I'm going to go ahead based on the turn, which is right here. I'm going to then grab this first control point and push it over and then find the next control point push it over in front of that one the next control point i'm going to reroute it now we're rerouted up and over so that's how you use the control points to kind of rearrange things so if i'm if i'm doing a route and i want to add an airbnb stop if i know that there's an airbnb hotel whatever it is um, right here i can then pull that control point over have it here, it's gonna reroute you here and then reroute you back to the route, okay? Also, to add POIs is really easy. So along any portion of the route, let's just say there's a restaurant, there's a waterfall, there, whatever it is, I can right click on anywhere on the route. I can then add a POI. You can have a generic one, you can do camping, lodging, parking, food, viewpoints, restrooms, all these different options to add a POI, type in the name of the POI, whether it's, you know, marathon, gas station, food and gas, what, you know, whatever it is, click save. It is now here and it's going to tell you what that POI is. You can do that along the route. So now that we've created this route, we can then go down, click save. It's going to give you all your elevation profiles. Kind of cool. You have your complete distance. Um, you can now click save. You can then name the uh, name the file, put a description in. You can make it public or private. You can also friend people. Click save. And we are good to go. So we now have that completed file. From there on the uh, desktop, I can then click on more and I can export this as a GPX file track. I can download it, and from there I can do whatever I want with it. I can download it to a, a tablet device, send it via email, however I want to do it. Okay, so we have our completed route. We can now share it, download it, do whatever we need to, um, go back and add additional POIs as needed. There's a lot of other options that you can do with this. You can combine files. So if you have separate files, you can then combine them as one route. Sometimes it can be a little finicky. There's a lot of other options, but this is the basics. This is how you can start from scratch to get a file. Yes, there are other programs that you can use to do this, but I find that this is a very, very good program, very um, easy to use, very detailed. I like the controls and I love the mileage markers to me. Um, there's a lot of other ones that do not utilize this. And to me, when I'm planning, this is a must have. Hope this was helpful. Thanks again.